Matthew 21, I'll read from verse 1 to 11 as we celebrate the Palm Sunday. Matthew 21. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you will say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet saying, and he's quoting Zechariah chapter 9, say to the daughter of Zion, behold your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Please pray with me before we explain the word of God. Heavenly Father, you are the fountain of wisdom. It is from you all meaningful and saving wisdom comes. We stand in awe and in need of you, of your word that is able to save our soul. Cure our our poor appetite for your word and grant that energy and excitement and expectation be given to us as we listen to your word. Take my lips and speak truth to your people. Banish my own personal ideas and philosophies. Bring to bear upon this congregation this morning the power inherent in your word in this clarity, in all of its forms, that when we live here today, what we will remember is that you came upon us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please return to your seats. Happy Palm Sunday uh, in the church, <coughs> historically, in the church calendar. We call this Sunday uh, <coughs> Palm Sunday. That is the Sunday that commemorates the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on Jerusalem. If you are of a Catholic or Anglican stock, if I, when I was coming to church, all the palm trees around Gariki were being ripped off by by the and we know you know we know who are doing these things. We know who are doing these things. Uh, 
so that they can celebrate the Palm Sunday. Let me say a few things by way of uh, today's Palm Sunday, so give me time. Let me say a few things to us. Uh, a lot has been happening to us uh, uh, that I need to make some few quick comments, particularly those who are in marriage covenant or marriage relationship. We have seen a lot of indiscipline within the church, particularly because of our strong stance in relationship to divorce and remarriage. Most of us take it for granted that after all, I can misbehave in marriage because it's a Christian marriage. The man cannot divorce me or my wife can, or the or, or vice uh, versa. So we, we, we are not taking our covenant seriously. We are not honoring our marriages. Some of us even use spirituality as a weapon in our marriage. Don't you know I'm fasting and praying today? I'm on the mountain today. Therefore, dot, 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 dot. And then some of you now, some of us are suffering in marriage. And some of us are in abusive, so-called Christian marriage. There is nothing called abusive Christian marriage. It, is, it was never in the contemplation of the Holy Scriptures, or the Holy Spirit, that people yoke the same self together in covenant so that one can have the liberty to abuse one another and then hide under the laws of the church to perpetuate such abuse. And to a large extent, the church has been complicit in these matters. When we now say, when a sister come up with tears and say, my husband is abusing, abusing me, or the husband comes through and says, my wife is abusing me. Oftentimes, what the church will say is, is well. My sister is well. Everybody is going through one form of challenges or the other. The Lord will give you grace to carry your cross. And then we use scripture also, and because I, I, it is not in the contemplation of the Holy Spirit, church, that the body of Christ, the local church, or the scripture be used for selfish reason. My admonition to us as Christian husband and wife is that I want to beg you, love your wife, obey and honor and respect and submit yourself to your husband as is fitting for those who are in Christ. There is no, you can't use this church to abuse your partner. We won't support you. We won't support you. You'll be surprised what this pastor will do to you if you are hiding under the church to perpetuate abuse in any form or shade. There's a zero tolerance for abusive relationship in the name of God here. There's no chauvinism and there's no patriarchism here. And there's no place for feminism also in this assembly. Am I being clear? Love one another. There is beauty in Christian love. You are in a covenant. And you are doing so in consideration of God who is watching you and who will judge you on the last day for what you have done to your partners. You, you, you won't escape. When we were in Sunday school, we talk about not how we pray against our enemies. See, whether we pray against our enemies or not, all those who hurt us will never escape the judgment of God, either in the now or in the life to come. All the terrorism, all the beatings, all the kidnapping, all those guys, today is their day. Eh? They say one day is a lot, uh, many days are for the uh, thieves, and one day is for the owner of the property. Yeah? There's one popular Nigerian song I heard on the on FM, in terms of driving. I don't know. I know some of you that are so kind of will understand. They say, one day for the, many days for the thief, one day is for the owner of the whatever. Uh, they say, one day monkey go go market. 
Uh -uh. He will find out that baboon is running the town. Yeah. Am I the only one that have heard that song on, on FM? Who sang it? He said one day a monkey will go market. Yeah, with his popular tricks. Then he found baboon. The baboon will be running town. And when baboon come to town, monkey will disappear. Every wrong done to us on this earth will be, will be addressed. Will be addressed. In the now or in the afterlife. No iniquity will go unpunished. Forget about it. That is sure. So whatever you are doing against your wife, in the name of God, against your husband, in the name of God. Because people, many Christian women or men are dying in their marriages. Because, and after they die, they say it's an abuse and blah, 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 and all that stuff. It will happen. It will happen. I think I was with uh, a couple one time. I've heard that the man is abusive. And I said, no, that man. No, some men are so gentle outside. You can swear that this man cannot kill a fly. And the woman said, I'm dying. And we went there. And in my own presence, the man stood up to knock the woman's head like he was about to do it. And then I stood up. I said, okay, now body I no get. Now body I no get. I go on you now. <laughs> and then he, the guy sat down. I said, I go call boys now. They go beat you for the streets. She will touch your wife again. I go organize boys from this area. We will beat you. If I can't beat you alone, we will organize boys. And the guy became soft. And for those who are about to get married in this church, pastor, pray for me. I need a wife. Mm. Marry well. Marry according to the will of God. And you'll be happy mm, ever after. Let me get back to my script, my text today, Matthew chapter 21, the triumphal entry. The subject for our consideration this morning is the king and a donkey. And I'm, I, this story about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem uh, is, uh, is given in all of the four Gospels. There are three Gospels called Synoptics. That is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Sometimes the information contained in those three Gospels may not be found in John. Or sometimes the information in John are not found in the three synoptics. But this, this particular one is found in all of the Gospels. So for your further reading, it is in Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 11 also. It is in Luke chapter 19 from verse 28 to 44. It is also in John chapter 12, verse 12 to 19. In most, most of my adult, adult Christian life, when we come to church on the Palm Sunday, or when there's a revival program around this period, the emphasis usually is on the palm or on the donkey. And there's a song that actually came through around the 90s that said, Ride on my back. Ride on my back. Jesus, you are my Lord. I am a cult, and I'm tied to your will. I am yours. Ride on my back. And many preachers did a lot of work with that song. Uh, so, so the emphasis is like, is like, some preachers will even say, like, like recently, that the only reason why the donkey walked on red carpet, as it were, is because Christ was on, a, on his back. As long as Christ is on your back, you will walk, you will be celebrated. So the, the, the application will be, Christian, do you want to be celebrated? Yeah. Allow Christ to sit on your back. Make yourself available. If you make yourself available and Christ could sit on your back, then celebration shall be your portion. And then you, you understand what that availability could mean sometimes in some of those sites. It could mean your cash. Make yourself available. Ride on my back. I'm, I'm the court. And, and then the emphasis always is on, on the donkey, on the palm, on the everything. 
that is not in the contemplation of uh, the text of uh, this scripture. So today it's not about you, it's about Christ. It's about Christ. It's about Christ. There are three things I want to bring by way of uh, emphasis today as we celebrate the triumphal entry to Jerusalem. The first thing we see is the, the announcement of the authority of Jesus. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Beth Phage, to the Mount of Olives, uh, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village, there will be a cult there. In fact, I've preached before from this passage. You see, the donkey was tied to, to, the, to the tree. And then the preaching will go like this. Some of the destiny has been, has been tied to the tree. And then lose him. Lose him and bring him. The master needs it. And then we'll start doing the normal losing and, uh, and so forth. And, uh, uh, so Jesus is telling the disciples to go to the, to the village ahead of them. They will find a court, a donkey. Uh, how shall we call it? The Jackie, yeah? Uh, you will find it around. He said they will find that donkey. Uh, no one has ever sat upon before. A donkey is a beast of burden, of burden. So no one has sat on it before. So untie it and bring it to me. And the story will be that people will accost them and say, why are you losing it? Why are you losing it? It's not yours. It's like stealing, isn't it? It's like if I tell fire came in now and said, something to go to City Mart and load some, some groceries for me. And they say, why are you, why? And then you didn't go through the till. It's like, why, where are you? Oh, no. Go to the shawarma spot, yeah, and just take some shawarma for me. Why are you doing this? Okay, uh, Pastor Abutu needs it. I said, oh, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Oh, you, 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 you go. That's the idea. I'm sure you might not come back here with, with your suits intact. Yeah? There will be some uh, uh, rough handling there. Well, particularly if uh, it's Pastor Abutu, yeah? Uh, and, and, and this is the story here. And it happens that the disciples went to that city. They found the donkey as the master has told them, then they began to untie the donkey, and then they asked them, why are you doing this? And the answer was that the Lord needs it. And immediately, the owner yielded the donkey to them. What Christ is revealing to us and to Israel at this point is that Christ is much more than a man. He is a king with authority with capacity to command events, to align. Who else could have known that in a particular village there is a donkey tied to a tree? And this particular donkey no one has ever sat upon before. Who could have orchestrated all the simple and little, little details of this event to cohere? except Jesus, an authority. When he speaks, people respond. I, I mean, the, the, the one that can command the, the wind and the waves to stop and they obey can command people. He's revealing himself to Israel that he's actually the king. So that when these disciples went to the owner or to this village and they asked them, who, who is doing this? They said, the Lord. That's the title that was used for, for him here. They didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. They say the Lord. The same title for Yahweh. The sovereign one needs it. And they gave it up. It shows that the, this Jesus is much more than uh, 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 a mere Nazarene walking on the street. And by extension, they were not stealing this donkey. If I was the one giving this instruction, it, it should be stealing or trespassing over other person's property. Because Jesus is the owner of the owner of the donkey and the donkey all put together. By him all things were made. So when he issued his warrant for, for this donkey to be released for this occasion, 
He was not acting in error. He was acting his godness and his authority to issue such warrants. So we come face to face with a man that does possess some divine authority. The owner of the court, the court is everything aligning together for this day. Jesus is not just a prophet, he is God. In the second place, we see the authentication of Jesus. We have looked at the authority of Jesus. We look at the authentication of Jesus. You know, many people does have various ideas about Jesus in the New Testament. Some people think him to be Elijah. Some think that he had a demon. Some think that he was just a weird kind of uh, imposter. There are a lot of ideas about Jesus. But Jesus is revealing himself more and more to the Jewish people that he is the Messiah that was prophesied in the Old Testament. And if he, it's not enough for him to come through and say, I am the Messiah, believe me. He must show by way of fulfilling prophecy and by many signs and wonders, particularly those signs and wonders that were spoken of him in the Old Testament. So that as the Jewish people open their own text of the scripture, they can confirm for themselves that the events around this man and his personality matches with the Old Testament scripture. Excuse me, this place is a little bit warm. So we see this authentication in the first place that by Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, first of all, that he's the true son of David. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. I want to hear your Bible now. I want to see you open the Bible. You will recall that when Jacob was blessing his children, uh, he bypassed Reuben because Reuben did something wrong on his bed. And then for Simeon and Levi, because of the violence they meted out to the people, he also cursed them. And then in verse 8, Jacob came to Judah and he said, Judah, Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. You remember that Christ is called the lion from the tribe of Judah. From the pre, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as a lioness, who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples, binding his fall to the vine and his donkeys caught to the choice vine and continuing. So he's fulfilling and putting his signature on the sand of history that he is from the tribe of Judah. He is the king, the eschatological king that will come from the loins of Judah. And to him, the obedience of people shall be. He also authenticates himself by fulfilling the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9. Please turn to Zechariah chapter 9. I'm sure many of you don't know where Zechariah is to be found. Well, it's before Malachi. So Matthew, Malachi, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9. Look at verse 9. Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, shouts aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. He is the bearer of salvation. Humble 
and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. And then he continued about our cult shattered and war horse from Jerusalem. So the identity of the would-be Messiah is that one day in history, he will ride on Jerusalem sitting on a donkey. He is a donkey riding king. And this is in contrast to what is normative to kings at this time or at all in all ages. Kings don't usually ride on donkeys except in some rare instances when a king wants to go make peace with his uh, warring uh, uh, other communities. Because the sign of a horse is, the horse is a sign of warfare and aggression. So if a king wants to make peace, maybe the king of Kafanshan wants to make peace with the king of, uh, of Chibok and they need to meet. The king that wants to stretch out the hand of peace will ride on a donkey as a sign of humility and sign of peace. Apart from that, kings that we know ride not just on horses but on chariots. When a king is coming in his full regalia, how many of you have seen a doba before? I've seen a doba in Kano before. It is, it is breathtaking. You see hundreds of horses riding before the king. The king is coming. And you see Hakimis and district heads riding. And they'll be riding. And they'll be riding. Then you start hearing the shouts or the, or the sound of a gunpowder. Then the king, the emir, is about to come. And around the area are horses upon horses of those who were close, supposed to be close to the throne. But we see the king of all kings coming down in humility, in lowliness, as a sacrifice to be offered for the sins of the world. That the salvation that Israel needs will come through this man, through the death and resurrection that will happen shortly from now. So by looking at Zechariah, you can confirm quickly that this is the Messiah that they were waiting for. Because all of a sudden, they were rejoicing in Jerusalem. There was a spontaneous celebration and the shout of Hosanna on the, in the city of Jerusalem. He also authenticated himself by the obedience of the people. As we look at Genesis chapter 49, the Bible says, to him shall the obedience of the people come. You can see when he issued uh, the warrant for the donkey to be released to his use, they obeyed. And uh, in, on this particular day, everyone in unison were together hailing him and rejoicing. He was commanding the obedience of the people. In the fourth place, we also see the authentication of Christ in his humility. I mean, if I were Jesus, so thank God I, 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 I'm not one. But reason with me for a moment, Royal, if you are the Messiah with all the powers at his disposal, the power that can walk on water, the power that could command Lazarus to come out of the tomb after four days, the power that could multiply bread into thousands and people could eat. If I have the power of life and death at my disposals and I want to show my people what the stuff I'm made of. I used to have many people in those days they would work hard towards December to go home with their new car. And I, there's a guy in this city that used to go home who borrow more cars. And sorry for Nigerian police. You go to DPO, they'll give you some uh, some more pole. And then this guy is a nobody here. He's a nobody. But he wants to get back to his village to show his enemies that the stone that the builder has rejected has become the head of the cornerstone. And then you just get some mobile police, hire cars. They have some customized plate number in his bag. So when they have gone through all the checkpoints, then they will stop, remove the, 
And then they'll put the customers, then they are appearing in the village. Oh, all hell is coming. And he don't have any car at the moment, so uh, that is another story for another day. If I were Jesus, do you know what I would do? I would not even sit on, on the donkey. I would suspend my, I would just cross my leg, and then I would suspend myself in the air. I would just suspend myself, I would just be coming to Jerusalem on the air. And then people, whoo, even the Pharisees, and they will be gathering themselves. Come and see. Come and see. And then all his enemies. Maybe there's one Pharisee who is his enemy. Then you do like this. His head will grow like big. You know, you see Nigerian movies, no? The head, the head becomes like that's 10 of the normal size. And then the other one that used to abuse your mom before, you would do like this. And then he become very, very short. And then, as you sit, suspend yourself in the air, you are raining down bread, and then bread is coming down from your fingers, and then you are just raining down money, cash. You know how David o will just sit on top of the van, and then he spray this, spray, and then just the entire place is spread with dollars and, and, and gold coins. Whoa, that's how a Messiah should look like. That's how a king should behave with all the complement of power at his disposal. But not our Lord. He fulfilled all the requirements of who a Messiah should be. He will be a humble servant. In fact, Isaiah 53 tells us that he's a suffering servant. A humble, with humility, with lowliness. And he is so different from every other earthly kings. They ride horses, he's on donkeys. They use the people. He humbled himself before the people. So he's an authentic savior. He's authentic savior. So that men can put their trust in him. In this passage also, we, we saw the acceptation of Jesus by the people. You know, he's not, Jesus was not as unpopular as the Pharisee would want us to believe. So as he drew near to Jerusalem, you remember, if you look at uh, St. John's account, uh, they, he had raised Lazarus from the grave recently. So when people were coming to Jerusalem at this point for the Passover, there were a lot of crowd that really want to see him and also to see Lazarus, whom he has raised. So if you look at the geography, this Bethany and then uh, and this Bethphagy, of course, Bethany means the, the house of tears, house of sorrow. Beth is house. Uh, Bethlehem means the house of bread. Bethany, house of weeping or house of sadness. And then Bethphage means the house of unripe grain. Just for information. So as he was, so um, he was between this area, so overlooking the city of Jerusalem. Because the place was on the right, like Mount Olivet, so you, you can see Jeru you could see Jerusalem right before your eyes. And uh, and as he, a lot of pilgrims towards Jerusalem, spoke from nowhere. It was never an organized crowd, not like a uh, politician. It's not a rented crowd. People really want to see Jesus. Those who were against him were in the minority on this day. You know, I think it was Luke. The Pharisees were so ashamed and said, you see, these people, we are not winning at all. This guy is winning, eh? We are, let, let's plan. And this particular occasion happened so that they will find more reason to kill him. So he, people accepted him because on a good day, Jesus is a loving man. He, he, he is he's lovable. He's someone that when you see him, there is no stain on him. There is no air of arrogance. There is no air of superiority around him. He is just the son of David. And the crowd burst into a prophetic and eschatological song. Hosanna. Hosanna means save us now, Lord. It's from the word Hoshia. The word Hoshia, Joshua, Jesus is the same Yeshua is the same thing. Save us now, Lord. Save us now. 
Because at this point, the people of Israel were under the authority of the Roman government. And we have Herod to contend with. We have Pilate to contend with. We have Caesar to contend with. There were no nation. There were no uh, people at this point. And the desire of entire entirety of Israel is that a Messiah will come that will save them from their enemies. But what they do not understand is that this Messiah will not save them from, from Herod, will not save them from Caesar, but he will save them from their sin. And there was a shout in the air, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And the entire city, the Bible says, moved at the sound of the people. The entire Jerusalem was shaken at the sound and the entrance of Christ. The Bible says verse 10, and when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up and, the, and people start asking questions, who is this? Who is this man that can command such a crowd? And the people answered, this is Jesus, the prophet. And this also is prophetic because Deuteronomy chapter 18 speak of a prophet like unto Moses. The prophetic and eschatological prophet that the Jewish, the redemptive prophet that the Jews uh, were waiting for. This is the prophet, the prophet. Not a prophet, the prophet. Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus from Galilee. So, I have reflected with you the authority of Jesus, his capacity to command obedience and to cause events to align according to plan, and then the authentication, the authenticity of Christ as the true Messiah that Israel has been waiting for, and then the acceptation of Christ by the people. They accepted him as their king. They accepted him as their Messiah. The common people accepted him. Now, as we close today, some some word for application. What do we take away on today's Palm Sunday? I want to encourage you to trust Jesus more and more. The one that has all the authority to cause things to happen. When you put your trust in God, um, our Muslim friends will tell us that Jesus is one of the prophets. Uh, Muhammad is the last of the prophets. But Christ is superior to Muhammad or superior to the prophet, but he's one of the prophets. So he's in the class of Moses. Uh, he's, he's like Moses. He's like Joshua. It's like Jeremiah, it's like Isaiah, it's like Muhammad. And in today, people are going say it's like Buddha. It's, there are many ways to God. No, there's no. He is the one that have all authority on his fingertips. And it is to him your obedience should be. When he calls, you must answer. Because he is not a savior at your mercy. You are at his mercy. And if you don't obey him now, you will, you will obey him sooner or later, isn't it? If you don't bow the knee now to him, you will bow the knee to him sooner or later. But it will be too late. Let me encourage unbelievers or those who are churchgoers or hypocrites in this church today. Bow the knees. He is your savior. He is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. There is no any other savior outside him. Have this settled in your heart. You know, when you look at Zechariah, you know how they call him? They say, having salvation is he. The entire work of redemption as organized by God resides in him. There is no salvation in any other except in Christ Jesus. 
It is to him you must yield your obedience. It is to him we must hear the shouts on a daily basis, Hosanna, save us now. We are in need of salvation. It is for him. You must shout, Hosanna, save us now. Salvation only rests in Christ Jesus. And let your cry always be, Hosanna. See, when we, we look around us and we see things happening and we <laughs> I've been in the hospital a few days, some few days now, and when Tam had injury and we're trying to help him. And you stand at the emergency section. I've not been to hospital for a long while myself. Oof. Woo. You see, when Brother Tam had an accident, you see what happened? It's just a multiple accident. Of an house of a guy with a pujoka who feared a coming upcoming trailer, just a young boy, you know how this small fulan, just the guy is like 17, and ran into another car. Another car ran into Tam's car of group of prayer warriors. <laughs> and then, so there's a Muslim, there's a charismatic Pentecostal guy's car, and there's Tam, who is a conservative Orthodox Christian. And then there's a Yoruba kind of all over the place kind of truck owner. All of them. So when they, and I just, I just, so there's a Muslim. And the other guy that had uh, his car badly damaged, uh, just bought the car like last week. Like that. Like, brand new to, new Toyota. I think that car should not be less than four million. And they rushed them to the hospital. And I met one guy there who said, Do you know we are from prayer, prayer, prayer meeting? <laughs> so that they are from prayer meeting and the accident happened baffles him. It shouldn't happen. I mean, I mean, can you imagine you are spending one hour sweating out with God? And then you are breaking your fast. And then, boom. Everything. If you're, and what and there are people who were brought into the emergency section and that will be pronounced dead on arrival. And then there will be tears and commotion all over the place. And trust doctors that say, please, uh, you are disturbing the other people. Yeah? Yes, let's move on. And then I, 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 I met another lady who was crying at the pediatric emergency. The, the son had just died in her hand like this. And the tear was that, this is my hope. See, the only reason why I'm in my husband's house now is this. Now, if you are legends and, and trust and hope and the hope for deliverance is not in Christ, what are you putting your hope in and on? Life issues, challenges, injuries, and death our common denominator to children of Adam, whether you are a Christian or not, whether you believe in miracles or you don't, whether you are an atheist or you are a theist, challenges happen, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a leveler. Death is a leveler. Challenges, sickness, affliction is a leveler. My question today is, to whom is your obedience? You are legions. Because on these days, people were shouting, Hosanna, son of David. The Pharisees were just making permutations. Even when the, the evidence is so glaring. Yeah. How, can, how, how can it be? We, 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 we have been here. We are the Sahendrin. See, everybody is following him. They are so concerned about the crowd that were following him than the text of the scriptures that has just been fulfilled in their eyes. So much for religion. 
Religion will not save you. Embrace Christ today. And accept the salvation that he has effected in his death and resurrection. This week of Easter, we are celebrating and remembering what he did for our salvation. Saving us is much, much, much than all the billion dollars in this world. Saving us the ticket that he has given to us where which we can enter the gate of heaven is much more than the green card of any European and Western countries. And I appeal to your conscience today to hold on to Christ, to believe him, to trust him, to obey him, and to hold him and never let go. In this interim, we are shouting Hosanna. We are shouting Maranatha. He will soon come. Today he was the day he comes on a donkey on Jerusalem. In few days, in few years from now, there's a hymn, a song written by Panam Paul. He said, few years turning into few months. In just few days, Jesus will come. No more crying. We shall be rejoicing. In just a few days, Jesus will come. In his second coming, he will not be on donkey anymore. Yeah? Ron, uh, Ron Kennelly sang a song that said, uh, he, the first time he came, he said he came in a, in a manger, right? Okay? He said, but when he's going to come again, he's going to come on a white horse. Is going to ride victoriously with the voice and shout of Archangel. The day my Lord and your Lord will descend back to this earth, it will be a commotion. The angels will be shouting, and the believers too will be shouting. And then we'll be caught up to meet with him in the sky. That is our expectation. He will not be back on a donkey, he'll be back on a horse. And the next time he comes, he will judge the wicked. He will judge the unbelieving. He will judge the adulterers. He will judge the idolaters. He will judge the thieves. He will judge the cowards. He will judge the revilers. He will judge the hypocrites. He will judge the religious people. The only people that will, be, that will escape his judgment are those who are already in him. If you don't shout Hosanna today, you will shout hell soon. Father, we thank you for this day that you came down on the city of Jerusalem with joy, with pomp and pageantry. Lord, some portions that we did not read today suggest that when you came to Jerusalem, you wept over it because of their unbelief. But it was suffice to the Lord that we may rejoice at the fact that you, you made yourself known to your people as the authentic Savior. Thank you for confirming in our own heart today that we've not trust you in, we have not trusted you in vain. That you have put our trust in an authentic, original Messiah with the signature of the Father and all the compliments of fulfilled prophecies. Bless the rest of our day, Father, and help us to love you with the whole of our heart, to devote our lives, our trust, our hope on you, and expect your return one of these days. Amen.